Stanford University. All right, well, welcome to lecture number 14 of Stanford CS 193P, fall of 2017 18. So, I'm going to finish off the thing we had about uh, the documents last time. I was hoping to have finished that last time, so we're kind of rushed for time this time, especially since we're going to get kicked out again uh, for a midterm right after. And then I'm going to launch into a long demo that's going to basically demonstrate all of the stuff we talked about uh, on Monday. All right. So, we did all that stuff on Monday so that we could easily take whatever our document-based app is and store it in a document. Okay, we went all the way through having UI document, write things out to the file system. Now we're going to add a really cool layer of UI in the front of that so that users can pick the documents they want, rename them, move them around, all that, right inside your app. Okay? And the UI for this, as you can see the screenshot of, looks a lot like the Files app in iOS 11. In fact, the Files app in iOS 11 is probably just a very thin layer on top of this UI or this API, the UI Document Browser View Controller. Okay, so how does this thing work, this view controller? Well, the most important thing to understand is that it's just a view controller, but it's always the root view controller of your application. So in other words, in your storyboard, it's always got the little arrow that points to it. And when you run your app, it's going to be the view controller users see first. Then they'll pick the whatever document they want, and then your UI will take over. Okay, your view controller will come up in front of this one, do whatever it does to show your document. All right, so that's the fundamental architecture of this thing. And one thing that's important to tell this little document browser view controller is what types of files you open. Uh, and you do that in your project settings. So if you go to project settings, uh, underneath the info tab, you got to select your target, uh, not the project, but the target. Go to the info tab, and then inside there, there's a little section called document types. Well, that's the types of documents you open and you just fill out this. You can have multiple types and you fill out this little form like that one. And here, for example, I've shown how to have JSON files be a kind of file that you open. Okay, and it's pretty straightforward there. Uh, the little things at the bottom there, the bundle type and the handler rank, are basically just saying, well, is this like a primary type of file that you open? Are you the owner of this type of file? Or is it just some other type that you, can, that you know how to open, uh, et cetera? Okay? Now, you can have your own document type, for example, for emoji art. Uh, I'm not going to get to it today because of time constraints, but emoji art really wants to have its own document type, okay? Dot emoji art or something like that. And you set that up in the section right below the document types called exported UTIs. UTI stands for universal type and identifier, and you can invent your own UTI as long as it's a nice, unique name. Like here, I've used the name edu.stanford.cs193p.emojiart. That's very likely to be a unique type identifier. And I just have to specify a couple of things, most notably at the bottom there, the file name extension that goes with an emoji art. I picked emoji art, dot, dot emoji art. Okay, and then once you set this up, you can go back up to the document types one at the top and add this as a document type that you open. Okay, just like that. And uh, yeah, and I explained the UTI there. Okay, now, we, uh, you know, from the start of this class, we always pick single view app as the type of app that we open, but we're actually, for document-based apps, we're going to use an Xcode template. It doesn't really give us much in that template, but it gives us enough that it's worth doing. So if you're going to do a document-based app, I recommend going back and creating uh, a, a new app, a new project, using this as the template. And in fact, I'm going to do that in the demo. Even though we're, you know, 80% of the way through emoji art, I'm still going to go back and create a new emoji art with this and then just move my files over because I want the things that come with the template. And let's talk about what's in that template. Uh, one thing is that it stubs out that document types, okay? It, it doesn't do JSON files, it does image files, but you can change it to JSON files or add more types. Uh, it also puts an entry in your info P list, which is very important, called supports document browser. And that's basically just saying that the documents that are stored inside your app sandbox are like real documents that people would want to open with like the files app or something like that. Um, so that's an important entry to put in your info P list. We're actually going to put that in in the demo manually just to emphasize it. It has one method in app delegate. You know, app delegates, that file that we're always moving out of the way into supporting files. Um, so it has one method in there that allows other apps, like the Files app, to ask your app to open your documents. Okay? And it's a very simple little method. We're not really going to look at it today, but this template does throw that in there for you. 
Uh, it also stubs out a subclass of UI document, which you usually don't need because you already created that yourself. And it also stubs out an MVC to show the document, just this really dumb MVC. And you don't need that usually either because you obviously have an MVC that shows your document or you wouldn't be writing this app. And finally, it gives a subclass of UI document browser view controller, which serves as its own delegate that just has like five methods in it that are really simple. And we're going to go over those in detail. So after you create a project with this template, what do you need to do to get your app working? Well, one, you've got to have your own UI document subclass, of course. Two, you've got to have your own document viewing MVC, right? Like emoji art view controller or your image gallery view controller, whatever, uh, from your homework. Then you have to add a little bit of code to this UI document browser view controller subclass that comes with the template. In its view did load, you're going to configure it a little bit. It has a couple of Rs you can set. We'll talk about that. You're also going to have to provide the URL of a blank document. And this is so that when the user goes into the UI and says, create a new document, okay, you're got, it's got to copy some you know, template, some blank version of your document to be that new document. So you just have to give the URL of a blank document to, so that you can support document creation. And then finally, the code you have to put in there is when someone wants to open one of your documents, you have to write the code to put an MVC on screen. And you don't do it with segueing. So we're going to learn a little bit new way to put an MVC on screen that does not involve segues. And the last thing you want to do to the template, of course, is update those types, the document types, to be not be image, but to be JSON or emoji art type or image gallery type for your homework or whatever. So those are the only four things you do. Once you do those four simple things, you'll get this full uh, UI. So steps one and two you've probably already done uh, in your app. Step three looks like this. This is view did load of the UI uh, document browser view controllers subclass, and the, you really have to do the first thing, which is set it as its own delegate, because it actually implements a lot of these opening file methods and stuff using its own delegate methods. Then you can have some things like allows document creation equals true. Do you allow people to create documents in your app, or are you just a document viewer? Do you allow multiple items to be picked? In other words, can the user go in and like shift click, or whatever the equivalent is, um, with the touch interface to choose multiple items and open them at once. Like emoji art can't do that. It can only show one document at a time. Uh, then you can also tweak the look of the UI a little bit. Okay, Change the colors, the tint colors and things like that to try and match your document controller when it comes up to have the same kind of look. So that's it. That's how you configure it in view to load. That's most of the settings that you can set. And then you have to provide this template URL. You do it kind of in a weird way. There's this method, document browser did request document creation with handler. Okay, that's the method that's saying somebody wants to create a document of your type in your app. What you got to give me is a URL to a template, to a blank. And the way it makes you do that is it hands you a little function called the import handler there. It's called, I guess I called it handler to uh, make it shorter, but it's actually called import handler. And it just takes a URL, which is the URL of a blank document, and then the import mode, which is either copy this or move it to create a new document. So it would be move if you created this thing every time this got called. It's copy if you create it once, and then you hand it out every time someone says new document. Okay, and that's it. All you have to do is call that handler. Super simple. You'll see that in the demo. Next, you have to present your document MVC. So we have to take a little time out and go to an aside and learn something different, which is how to put an MVC on screen without segueing. Okay, so how do we do that? It's quite easy. There's a method in UI View Controller called Present Animated. You send it to yourself if you're a view controller, and you give it an argument of another MVC, and it presents it animated. And it presents it on screen modally, which means it takes over the entire screen. Okay, and just owns the entire screen until it dismisses itself, and then it's back to you, okay, which is exactly what we want here. So uh, the trick here, though, is how do I get a new MVC to present? And I told you actually earlier that iOS has a few MVCs, like the camera take, picture taking MVC and some things, so it has some. But what if you have one of your own? Okay, well, it's really easy, actually. You just put it in your storyboard. Okay, it won't have any segues drawn to it, but what you're going to do is you're going to name it. You're just going to select it, go to your identity inspector, there's a little storyboard ID in there, you give it a name, and then you use that name in your code like this. Okay? You get an instance of your storyboard, which you get by saying UI storyboard name, 
and you know that our storyboard has always been called main.storyboard, but we haven't talked about the fact you can actually have multiple storyboards, perfectly legal. Um, we always just have that main, and bundle is almost nil there because that's your main bundle. Nil means your main bundle. So you get the storyboard, and then you ask the storyboard to make you an MVC with that name by saying instantiate view controller with identifier. And that foo that you have there is the thing that's in my identity inspector for that MVC, for the controller, top level controller of that MVC. Okay, and that's it. Now you just prepare that thing, in this case, uh, you know, by setting its document, and then you just present it. So it's really, really easy. Instantiate view controller with identifier is the key method that you need out of storyboard. All right, so back to our present. So we need to write, be able to write a function that presents it, and it's really simple. We're just gonna get our storyboard. We're gonna instantiate our view controller from the storyboard. Now, really importantly, we're gonna set the document of the document showing MVC that we just got the storyboard. We're gonna set it to be a new document with the URL that's passed to us because it's present document at URL. Now this might be a new document it just created by copying that template or it might be some document we're opening that was created in the past, okay? You don't know and you don't care here, okay? And then you just call present of that document VC. That's it, okay? You do all that and it just will all work. Of course you want to set the types that you do, JSON or emoji art, whatever. Um, and we're going to see all of this happening in emoji art. So let's jump right into the demo and do this in emoji art. Now emoji art is kind of an obvious app to want to turn into a document based app because we're building these beautiful works of art with emoji, right? And we certainly would want, might want to do multiple of them, not just have to constantly be working on the same one. So there's something about our MVC though, our emoji art uh, view controller, the view controller that shows uh, our emoji art document, it has no model, right? We have no model in this thing, it's just all view, okay? All the emoji art view especially. So I'm going to add another section here at the top uh, to put my model, I'm gonna put this in my model section right here. Everyone remember that these marks that you put, that causes it so that when you go up here to the top, you, these are like in sections, you see the sections there? So I've added a new one up here, model. And you can click on them to jump to the different sections. Um, so my model, it wants to be some sort of var, I'll call it emoji art, and it's gonna be of some type, like emoji art, okay? I, this type doesn't exist, but that's kind of what my model wants to be. So w let's invent a struct here, uh, or a class or a struct, that represents an emoji art document. Well, what's in an emoji art document? There's the URL of the background, and then there's all those emojis, what they are and where they are and how big they are, right? That's what an emoji art document looks like. So let's go create a model to do exactly that. So I'm gonna create a new file. It's a model file, so we're over here in Swift, not over here at Cocoa Touch, we're over here with Swift file. Hey, I'm gonna call it emoji art. Makes perfect sense to call it that. Here it is, I'm gonna type it in really fast. Whoop, there it is. Uh, and so here it is, makes perfect sense what it is, right? A URL, that's for the background. Then an array of these emoji infos, which is this thing. And each emoji info is its position, X and Y. The text, that's like a bike or the B or whatever the, the string is. And then the size, which I'm gonna have be the font size. Notice I've made these ints instead of CG floats or whatever because this is a model. Okay, this is not a UI thing, it's, it's our model. So these could be ints or they could be doubles, but I decided I wanted ints because I want my JSON to look nice, not have a lot of uh, fractional numbers and all that stuff. So I decided to make them ints. And that's it, that, this fully represents an emoji art document. This is just initializer that initializes those two things, There's nothing else to it but this. All right, now let's think about our emoji art view controller back here. What does it need to be able to interact with the model. Well, it needs all those little uh, UI labels that are in its emoji art view, no problem, we can get those. We're the controller, we can talk to our view and get anything we want from it. But it also needs the URL, and currently, we actually don't keep the URL for the background image, okay? Let's go scroll down to where we get that image. It's right at the bottom here, when we drop an image. And you can see our image fetcher goes off and fetches that URL and image, but then we only use the image. We don't use the URL. Okay, so we're gonna start doing that. And I'm gonna do it in a way just to show you a little bit more kind of Swift program, which is I'm gonna make this var, which is currently a UI image, be a tuple. Okay, and why would I make this a tuple? Well, I make a tuple because I want the URL and the image to always be set together. 
I would never want to accidentally set the image and have the URL be different, okay? So I'm going to always set them together. So I'm going to change this from being a UI image to being a tuple. So let's go find out where it's declared. Here it is. It's currently a UR, uh, UI image. I'm going to change it to be a tuple that has a URL and an image as part of the tuple. And of course, changing this thing's type is going to require me to change its implementation a little bit. Like all these new values down here aren't UI images anymore. They're this tuple. So we got to say new value.image when I want the image. image. And of course, when I'm returning it, I can't just return the image here. I have to return a tuple with some URL of some sort and that UI image. And what URL am I going to return? Well, I'm going to have to actually store that. So I'm going to make a little private var. I'm going to call it emoji art background image URL, which is going to be a URL. And I'm going to store it in there. Okay. Now I'm not going to want to set it from here. I'm going to always want to set it from here, but I'm just going to use this as storage. Some people might put an underbar in front of this here to kind of emphasize that this is background storage. Okay, we're not going to ever set this directly. We set the URL here, so it's always set the same. So I'm going to leave it underbar there too. So this URL here then is this one. So I'm just going to return this URL. And of course, when I set, I need to set the URL here to be this new values URL. Okay, so now I'm capturing the URL all the time. I always have the URL anytime I have an image. I'm, that's good. I'll need it for my model. Okay. Now let's talk about the model here. Um, we could have this model just stored like this and then have some other functions that like go and look at all of our UI labels and grab the URL and build an emoji art and return. But you know, I'm going to do something kind of fun. Watch this. I'm going to make this a computed property. Okay, this is my model, but I'm making computed. And why am I doing this? Well, anytime someone wants my model, I'm going to look through my UI and make it for them. And anytime someone sets my model, I'm going to go update my UI to be like that. That way these things can never be out of sync. My model will always be a perfect match with my UI. And that is a really good thing to have in a controller is the model and the UI always in sync. So that's why I'm going to do this. Okay, and I think it'll work out nicely here. All right, so what do I need to do to get my model? I got to return the URL and I got to return all those little emoji infos, right? I'm eventually going to have to return some emoji art by calling its initializer URL with some URL and the emojis with some emojis. Okay, so we need these two vars to be created. Well, the URL is really easy. I'm just going to say if I can let URL equal my uh, emoji art background image dot URL. That's its URL. If I can do that, then I am ready to return something here. By the way, if I can't do that, then I'm going to return nil. Because I don't really, for me, my emoji art is not really well defined if it doesn't have a background. Okay? I, it doesn't really make sense to have emoji art where there's like a bee and a bike on a plain background. We don't really support that. Um, so I'm just going to say, if you ask for my model and I have, don't have a URL yet, then I'm just going to say I don't have a model yet. I don't, I, I've not been created enough to say that I have one. Okay, so that fixes the URL. How about this emojis thing right here? We have to um, set this emojis bar right here. So I'm just going to uh, say let emojis equal. And essentially what I want to do here is go ask my emoji art view for all its subviews but I really don't want all of them. I just want the ones that I can get as a UI label. Okay, I'm using map here. You all know map. So this returns an array of UI labels. Uh, the only thing about this is this might return nil. So I actually want to use a different map called flat map. So flat map is just like map. It's just that if the little function returns nil, it ignores it. Okay, so it flattens it down to not have the nil ones. All right, so now I have all my UI labels. Now I need to turn this into an array of these emoji infos, right? Because that's what I'm doing. I'm returning my model. So how the heck am I going to do that? I'm definitely going to need a function that takes a UI label and returns one of these emoji infos. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to do that by writing an extension to this struct. And I'm going to put that extension over here in my controller because that extension is going to take a UI label as an argument and return an emoji info as the value, and that UI label is a UI thing, so that cannot be in my model. Okay? But it can be in my controller. 
And this is my controller. And some people say, well, wait a second. If you put uh, an extension here to Emoji Info, you've just added UI to your model. No, okay, this is my controller, okay, not my model. The fact that my controller is implementing this with an extension, this extension lives in my controller. So that is perfectly legal to do. And you'll see iOS do that, where it'll have something like NS attributed string, which is actually in foundation, not a UI thing. But when you start adding attributes like font and stuff like that, now it becomes a UI thing. All that stuff is implemented in the UI kit it, by extension to NS attribute string. We're doing the same thing here. So I decided to do this instead of with a function, I actually added an extension that adds a new initializer to emoji info. Okay, initializes it with a label. And if I can get the attributed text out of there and get its font, then I can make myself an emoji info. If I can't, I'm going to return nil, so this is a failable initializer. This is how you fail out of a failable initializer. Okay? So now that I can do that so easily, I'm just going to take this array of UI labels right here, and I'm going to flat map that. And the thing here I'm going to say is return an emoji art dot emoji info using my nice new label initializer. And remember that dollar zero right here is these UI labels. Yeah, you got that? Kind of cool? All right, so that's our emojis. That is creating our emoji art. That's it. That's all we need to do to get our model. How about the set side of it? Well, the first thing I want to do when someone sets a new emoji art is clear out what I've already got uh, in there. So I'm going to set my emoji art background image to nil, nil comma nil, it's a tuple, remember? And I'm going to set all of my emoji art views subviews, okay, but actually only the ones that are labels. I'm going to send a message to all of them for each to remove themselves, oops, remove themselves from their super view. Oops, super view. Okay, so I'm just taking all the labels in there and removing them because somebody set a new model, so I'm uh, clearing everything out here. Uh, oh, as question mark, there we go. Okay, so now I've cleared everything out. Now I need to put this new thing in. Well, to put the URL in, I'm going to need to fetch it. Okay, so let's fetch it. Okay, here's how I fetch, right? Here's my image fetcher thing, the same thing I did when some was, something was dropped. And back, I'm going to do this back on the main queue because now I'm going to update my UI with this URL when it came back. Um, okay, so what am I going to do when this thing comes back? Uh, first of all, I've got to set my background image. So I'm going to set my image, uh, whoops, my emoji, emoji art image background equal to the URL and image that came back. Again, this is a tuple. I'm setting it from here, coming back from the image fetcher, and now I need to add all those labels for all the emoji, right? The bees and the bikes and everything that I've dragged down, I gotta put all those in there, so let's do that. Um, probably the easiest way to do that, kind of conceptually, I wanna take this new value of the emoji art and look through all of its emojis, and for each of them, I kinda wanna just ask my emoji art view, art view, to add a label with the right arguments whatever, uh, for each one, right? This is conceptually what I want to do. Well, actually, I have add label in my emoji art view, but I made it private. So I'm going to go over to my emoji art view and make that public. And remember that I'm the controller over there. I can call anything I want in my view. My view can't call anything in me without blind structured communication, but I can call anything I want in it. So here we have label. It looks like it wants an attributed string and the point. That makes sense. So let's go back over here and do that, so the attributed, attributed uh, text, is that what they called it? Uh, uh, we want some attributed, oh no, it's just with, I think, with, yes, with attributed, uh, attributed <laughs> text, and uh, centered at, uh, actually I already know centered at, centered at is just the uh, CG point with uh, the X being this dollar zeros x, and the y is this dollar zeros y, okay? Because dollar zero is each of these emojis, so it's an emoji info, okay? An emoji info, just to remind you, is this thing. So the x and y is the x and y position. Now I need to deal with the text and the size, so let's do that. I'm gonna do that by letting that attributed 
text argument equal the text converted to an attributed string. I actually have this nice little function I wrote in utilities called attributed string with textile. And so I'm going to make it body font of a certain size, which is a CG float of the dollar zeros size. So there, there we've set. Now if someone sets our model, boom, we've set everything. Okay, our UI should match. Okay, now we're in great shape because we've got an MVC here which has a model that we can set and get that makes our UI work and all we need to do is make it persistent. Okay, make it store on disk. And we're going to make it persistent by having this emoji art thing here become codable and be able to turn itself into a JSON and then we're going to use JSON as our file format. Okay, so let's go back to emoji art over here and make this thing generate JSON. And we're going to do that by just saying that it is codable. Okay, and when we put codable on there and we recompile, we're going to see if there's any problems with this and see whether it is codable or not. So let's find out. And it says it's not. Okay, it says it doesn't implement decodable and encodable, which are the two protocols in this codable protocol. Why not? This is codable. An array is codable. Oh no, this type is not codable. Oh, well, no problem. Colon, codable. We made that codable. And now we'll let this thing recompile. Hey, error went away. Look at that. We just made emoji art codable. And this is what I was telling you about this codable stuff. The new kind of archive is so easy because you don't need to do all that inits and decode and encode and all that stuff. For 90% of all structs, it'll just do it for you. Now, again, our JSON keys are going to be the same as our variable names, okay, when we do the JSON, which is good in this case because they're all nice things, but we could change it by adding that private enum coding keys, colon string, remember that? So it's, we're not going to, but, but we could do that. All right, now how about the JSON? How do we get the JSON version of this? Well, I'm actually going to add a var to this emoji art called JSON, and it returns a data, optional, possible, I guess we might not be able to turn ourselves into JSON, but I think 100% we would, but I'll make it a data just to be clear. And I'm just going to create a JSON out of myself by returning, trying to use a JSON encoder to encode myself. And that's it. Okay, that's either going to return a data of myself at JSON or nil if it couldn't do it. Now, this is never going to fail. I'm so confident this is never going to fail. I could even do try exclamation point right there and not make that an optional because these types are all 100% uh, encodable. Okay, but I'll, I'll do this just to kind of be correct programming. So now we have a way to turn this thing into emoji art. So let's add a little bit of UI to our emoji art to have a button I'm going to call save, which you press save, and it's going to eventually save this JSON, this emoji art document to disk as JSON, but first we'll just have it print the JSON out on the console so we can just see what's going on here. So let's do that. Let's go to our storyboard and add a save button here. Now if we look in our storyboard, look, we got a lot of junk in here, okay? This is that table view that we put to try and have our documents in a table view. Mm, well, we're going to have a significant upgrade here because we're going to use that nice files app thing. So I'm just going to delete this junk, okay? Let's get rid of all that. Um, and I'm, I want to now put a save button somewhere here in this UI. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to embed this in a navigation controller so that I get the little title bar at the top. You see this little title bar that comes at the top? Because that's a good place I could put a little save button too. <laughs> okay, so throwing things in a navigation controller to get that title bar is actually quite common and quite nice feature. Um, so let's go down here and search for a bar button. Bar button. Here it is. We always use bar buttons in these bars, not regular buttons. And I'm going to inspect that bar button and make it be a save. Okay, a standard button called save. There it is. Let's wire it up, target action, into our controller here. So control drag down here. It's going to be an action. I'm going to call it save. Uh, it's going to be a bar button item as its argument. Here we go. Here it is. Let's go back to full screen so we can get the whoops, get the full with here to do our save. So this save, I just wanted to print my model out as JSON on the console. So to do that, I'm just going to say if I can let JSON equal my model, if I have one, it's JSON. Oops, JSON. Okay, now I have the JSON. It's a data though, okay, and I want to print it out obviously as a string. And 
uh, when you have a data and you want to print it as a string, you have to tell the system what the encoding is. Like, is it ASCII, <laughs> okay, or Unicode, some sort of Unicode thing? Well, JSON is always UTF-8, which is Unicode uh, enco encoding, 8-bit encoding. So we're just going to let, uh, uh, it's an if, yeah, if let JSON string equal string constructor with taking that JDA that I have and telling it what the encoding is, which is dot, uh, you can see there's a lot of different kinds of, you know, ISO Latin 1 and shift gis and all these things, ASCII right there, but we're going to do UTF-8, okay? So if we're able to do that, then I'm just going to print it, print JSON string. Okay, so now our save button is going to print it out. So let's go ahead and tr give this a try. You can see a little bit of warnings over there. That's just because of that. Uh, um, oh, yes. Okay, that warning is a good warning. Let's go look at this warning right here. It says unreachable part of our storyboard. And, in, and indeed, if we go look at our storyboard over here, where is it? We have no entry point to our storyboard. Because remember I deleted all that junk? Well, I deleted the entry point with it. So let's select this navigation controller and go over here and inspect it and say this is our initial view controller. Okay, so you got to pay attention to your warnings over here, right? Okay, so let's bring our console back up, make this as wide as possible, run, go back, take a look here. All right, this time it's running. So here's our emoji art. Right here, let's go ahead and make a nice emoji art document about with this thing right here. And let's put a little bicycle on the road right there. Okay, now I'm going to hit save and let's watch our console over there. Oops, save. Bloop. There it is. Okay, here is our emoji. It's got the URL, which is this really, really long Google uh, image emoji. And then it's got the emojis, which is an array that only has one thing, the bike in it. So let's add another thing. My second favorite thing to add, which is a B, and save. Okay, and now JSON has the B in it as well. Okay, so with very little work here, just by making that thing codable, we have made it so we can save our document in JSON format. So now let's add the file system code to actually write it out to disk. Okay, that's going to be our next step here. So let's go do that. Go back to our controller here. So instead of printing this thing out as a JSON, we're just going to write this to disk. Now, this is of type data, right? It's a data. So I can just write it to disk with json.write to URL. Now, a couple of things. One, we have to say what URL are we going to write it to? And of course, this throws. So we're going to have to deal with both of those things. So first, let's talk about what URL we're going to write it to. Well, anytime you're talking about the file system, what's the number one thing you have to do when you're creating a URL? Find a directory in the sandbox to start. Okay, always do this. 100.0% of the time, you're going to write something in the file system or read something from the file system. You've got to figure out which sandbox directory you're going to start in. So this is a document. So I'm going to put it in my document directory. Okay, so I ha let's type this in here. Okay, this is how we look up a sandbox directory here, this default file manager default method URL. So we're looking for the document directory. We always do user domain mask. We're not replacing a file, so we don't care about that. And we want it to create the documents directory if it hasn't. And then I'm going to append the name of my file onto that URL for the document directory, untitled.json, I'm going to call it. Okay, so now I have the URL. I can put this in here and write it. Now I just have to deal with the fact that this throws. So that means I have to put try in front of it. And I'm going to actually catch errors from this. Catch, whoops, catch, let error. And here if I get an error, I'm going to say print, couldn't, oops, couldn't, save. And we'll put the error right in there so we can see what it is. But if it doesn't fail, then I'm going to say saved successfully. Okay, so now when we run on our console, we should see either save successfully or couldn't save. So let's go try this. Okay, put all this code on here at the same time so you can see it. Let's run again. Let's go out here. See that? Okay, so one thing about our app, of course, every time it starts, we, it doesn't load up the document, so it's always blank. So we always have to start again. So here, let's start again with this one. Okay, let's 
put an apple in the sky up here, and I'm going to hit save now, and hopefully it'll say save su uh, successfully in our console. Ready? Woohoo! Save successfully. Good to add another one. Some coffee. Save successfully. It's working. But this is not very satisfying because it's just saying save successfully, and you're like, oh yeah, sure. Well, uh, you say it saved, but did it really save? But actually, we can go look and see if it's saved and go find this document because we have the iOS 11 Files app, okay, which lets us look at documents in apps that opt in. Now, the key there is apps that opt in. So we have to actually put that little info P list thing I was talking about that says we are an app where you can look in our document directory and see our documents. So let's go do that. We're just going to jump over to our info P list here. I'm going to do the same kind of thing that we did uh, in your homework where you added a row. Remember that to do the HTTP uh, URL. So I'm going to add a row. Supports document browser. There it is. Okay. Supports document browser. And I'm going to set that to yes. Okay, and that tells the system, okay, you can look in my documents directory and see my documents, okay? So I have to run again because we have to transfer the app back over uh, to the iPad so it'll look at this info.plist over there. But actually, I don't even need to create that untitled JSON again. It's already there, okay? So I swiped up from the bottom to get this little thing to appear on the bottom here, and I'm going to click uh, touch on this app right here. That is the Files app. And you're going to see the UI here for files. This is a lot what your UI is going to look like in your app. Okay? So it's got all these nice folders right here. You can arrange them by date and tags and name. Uh, you can go put things on your iCloud Drive. You can put things on your iPad. And here, I'm clicking iPad. Emoji Art is the only app on my iPad currently that has a documents directory with documents that I files is allowed to look at. That's because this iPad is pretty much fresh. Install. But here it is, my app. And if I click on this, notice it puts my app icon in it. That's kind of nice. If I click on it, woohoo, it's untitled.json. And I can long press on it and say info, and it'll even tell me, look, this is a kind of a, a file. It's a JSON file. It has 656 bytes. That sounds about right, right? That's about how many things we had in there. And I can even click on it to view it. However, look where it views it. Whoop. Okay. In some sort of JSON. Um, viewing app of some sort, uh, not in our, uh, in our app. So that's kind of weird. Why is that? Well, because we're not a JSON viewing app. We're an emoji art app. So the files app doesn't know that we are the one to open there. And we can fix that a little bit later. We're probably not going to have time to do it today, uh, the demo, but I will certainly do it in the code I post and show you. And the fix to that is to define a new file type called emoji art. And then the files app will know, oh, that's an emoji art. Thing. But right now, it looks at the extension JSON and says, well, I'm going to do the JSON uh, thing. And you can tell, see, it's right, though. It's got the apple. It's got the uh, coffee in there. It's really small, but you can see it. OK, so that's great. So we know it's actually saving. So let's go to the next step, which is reading this document. So let's have our app, every time it puts its view controller up, view will appear, we'll do it in, it looks for untitled.json and loads it up. That way, every time we run our app, it won't be blank every time. It'll just load the last document we were working on, the untitled.json that we were working on. OK, so let's do that. Go back to our, oops, go back to our controller. Here's our view controller right here. Um, so we're going to do that in view will appear. Let's do view will appear. Super.view will appear animated. OK, so what do we need to do in here, uh, in view will appear, to get this uh, to appear? It's pretty straightforward. We just need to get that URL for the untitled.json, and then look at the data and turn it back into an emoji art and set that as our model. OK, got that? So let's do that. Uh, of course, I need that URL, so I'm going to do the same uh, thing that I did before. What do I call that uh, URL? Yeah. So here's where I go get my document directory and append the path uh, component of untitled JSON. This is exactly what I did up here. Okay, no different because I want the exact same uh, URL. But here I'm going to say if I can let JSON data equal trying to have data contents of exactly the same thing. This data contents of is exactly what we did to get image URLs over HTTP, right? So contents of the file URL, which is this untitled JSON file in our documents directory. That's what this URL is. So if I'm able to create a data out of that file, now I need to create an emoji art out of it and set that as my model. So emoji art is my model. I'm going to set it equal to. I need to create an emoji art 
from some JSON data, okay? Well, we don't have an initializer for emoji art that creates an emoji art from JSON data, but we could really easily write one. Let's go back to emoji art over here, and just like we wrote this to get the JSON, we can certainly write an initializer, which I'm also going to have be available, that takes some JSON, which is a data, and initializes. And if I can't initialize it, then I'm going to fail and return nil. Okay, so what does it look like uh, to do this? Again, really easy. I'm just going to say if I can let new value, that's going to be my new value that I pull out of there, equal try to JSON decode, oops, decoder, that decode, and what am I trying to decode out of that data? I'm trying to decode an emoji art object. Okay, and from what data? The JSON that you passed in. Okay, so if I'm able to do that, if I'm able to decode it out of there, now I have it, the new thing in new value, and so I'm just going to say self equals new value, right? I'm in an initializer here, so I'm just going to initialize myself, and I'm going to fail otherwise by returning nil. Now, this one's much more likely to fail, because you can imagine corrupted JSON, just plain the wrong JSON file, okay, an empty JSON file, all these things would call this to fail, and that's fine, it's just this will not initialize, this is only going to initialize if this is valid, a valid JSON encoded, something from this, basically. Uh, that's the only way it'll, it'll succeed. So now our code will work over here, right? We've got this uh, implemented. So now when we quit and go back, our uh, document should be there. So let's do that. Let me iPad up here. Let's run and then show it to you. Okay, here it is. And sure enough, look at that. It already picked up that untitled.json. And if I add a dog to this and hit save, okay, then quit and run again, comes back with the dog. So we're both saving it, okay, with the save button and review will appear, we're loading it up. So this is excellent, okay, we're really making a lot of progress here, but now it's time to take this to the next level, which is to be able to do that files app kind of UI. And to do that, to make that easy, and to simplify our existing code, actually, we need to use UI document. Okay, UI document encapsulates a document into just this really beautiful way, really nice API, and that's what we need to do. Now, we could just do that here. All I'd have to do is create a UI document subclass and implement the two methods I talked about in lecture uh, on Monday. But this is where we're going to step in and use that template. Okay, we're going to throw that template in here for document based. So I'm going to stop uh, my app right here, and I'm going to rename my existing Moji Art, I'm just going to call it Moji Art Old, okay, and then I'm going to go back to Xcode and create a new project, okay, and this new project, I'm going to use this document-based app right here, I'm going to call it still Emoji Art, basically it's going to be the same app, it's just going to have this built on this template, okay, I'm going to put it in the same place, I put everything else. Okay, here it is. Let's quickly look at the things this created, okay? Uh, it's, it's just a normal kind of Xcode app, so of course it has assets and launch screen and app delegate, and so I'm going to put these three things in a little uh, supporting files like I always do. However, I'm going to take a moment to take a, first take a look at the app delegate, because the app delegate is not just a bunch of empty methods with just comments only, it also now has this actual method. This method is called open input URL. This is sent to your application by other applications like files that say, I want to open up one of your documents. Now this is only going to get called if we have an emoji art document, not a JSON document because we're not a op JSON opening app. Uh, but this is how that happened. It's pretty simple code. I'm not going to go through it, uh, but this is where that's going on. And we're going to talk all about app delegate, all this stuff next week. All right, so we got the supporting files. What else came over there? Well, we have this UI document subclass called document. Well, this is going to eventually be our emoji art document, okay? Emoji art. Let's even rename the name of the file to be emoji art, okay? So this has got those two functions, right? The one that converts from our model to a data and from our data to a model back and forth. That's all we have to implement uh, to make this work. So we'll do that in a little bit. Then there's this document view controller is basically like emoji art view controller, right? It's just this stub for a document view controller. And of course we have emoji art view controller, so we don't need this. So I'm just going to 
right click on it and delete it. Okay, so I'm going to delete this document view controller. I don't need it. I have my emoji art view controller. Uh, and then there's this document browser view controller thing right here. This is the subclass of UI document browser view controller. Here's that view did load I was telling you where we're going to configure it. Uh, here's the place where we're going to call this import handler to copy a um, template. Here's some other methods that we're not even going to have to touch that just get called when it's time to open a document. And then there's this one down here, present document, which I'm going to delete most of. This is just an internal method that's called from all those other things that says, okay, present your MVC for this document at this URL. Okay, so we'll be implementing that soon. And then, of course, we've got our storyboard. Let's see what's in our storyboard. I'm going to make our storyboard look more like an iPad. It's a little more familiar to us. Although our app will work on iPhone, by the way, after all this. I will show you that, hopefully, if we have time. Uh, so there's only two view controllers here in this uh, storyboard. One is this one. That's the document browser view controller. That's the thing that looks like the Files app. Okay? And notice that's where we come in. Okay? We arrive into this app there. Then there's this. This is going to be our emoji art view controller. In fact, I'm going to delete the one that comes in here because it's just a little placeholder. And I'm going to put my emoji art view controller here. And let's go do it right now. In fact, I'm going to go back to emoji art.old here. I'm going to go to its storyboard. And one thing that's really cool about storyboards is that you can copy and paste from one storyboard to another because all the connections to the code are made by name. Okay, it's only just the name. So as long as the names are the same in both way, places, it works. So I'm just going to select all of this and hit copy. Okay, then go back to my new one here and hit paste. Okay, zoom out a little bit so we can see it all through our document outline. Okay, make this look nice here. Now, one thing to notice, I know this is a little hard to see on this screen, so I'll try and zoom in more, but you notice there's no segue between here, right? These live on their own, this one lives on its own, and that's why we have to do this manual presenting. The other thing I'm going to do for now is I'm going to have the entry point be our existing view controller. We'll add this one in once we get the UI document stuff working, because we have to have UI document working before we can really uh, leverage this. So we're just going to have our old UI for now, and I'm going to try and get our existing app as we had it before working with UI document. So it's going to be the exact same thing, but just working with UI document instead of directly accessing the file system there. So of course we also need to have all of our files from the old one. So let's go back to old emoji art here and get all of our stuff out of there. Oops, this. Getting these two things on the screen at the same time on this very small screen can be a challenge. All right, so I'm going to bring over my uh, controller, my model, my view, some of the supporting files like the cells, the gesture recognizer uh, stuff, the utilities the stuff I did. I'm not bringing over the app delegate because that came with the, um, uh, with the template, so I don't want to do that. Uh, and I'm not bringing over my table view controller either. That's what's under junk here. That's the table view controller that was supposed to be the documents thing that we said, forget that, we're using this new files thing. So I'm just going to drag these over here, okay, copy them all in. And one other thing I want to uh, bring over actually from here is my app icon. Okay, I got this nice app icon, don't want to lose that, so I'm going to go over here to my assets in my new one and get rid of the blank app icon and just drag this app icon over here. Okay, so that's it. So I've essentially brought over everything from my old emoji art to the new emoji art. But what we're going to do first is go and uh, make this emoji art document business work. So let's go do that. Where is our emoji art document? It's right here. Okay, this is the thing I just renamed. And there's only these two methods. They're doing stuff we know exactly how to do. We were just doing this. Uh, one thing about this is you notice that contents returns an any, not a data. That's because this any could be a file wrapper. Okay, a directory full of files is a way to represent a document, just like is a data is. But usually this is going to return a data. In fact, look, the default returns a blank data. So here, to do this, uh, to do either of these, we actually need that model uh, passed to us in the document. So I'm going to have a var emoji art over here as well, which is going to be an emoji art. And anytime I want to save my model from my controller, I just take my controller's model and put it in the document. And then the document knows what to do from there. So let's go ahead and uh, return this emoji arts JSON. 
And if it doesn't have JSON representation, then we'll return data, which is a blank document, okay? Empty document, and we know how to deal with that because our documents always come up empty. And then this is the other way around, okay? Here we're having one passed to us, okay? A data passed to us, and we want to turn it into an emoji art. So I'm going to say if I can let the JSON equal the contents that were passed to me as a data because I don't deal with file wrappers, okay? If this were a file wrapper, I, I don't deal with that. Uh, then I'm going to set my emoji art equal to, again, using that constructor that I did to take a, J, a data and turn it into an emoji art. And this might fail, and that's fine, and then this will be nil, and then it won't save uh, the document. Okay, I'm going to save a nil document. And uh, I talked about this of type in both these cases. This is a UTI. Okay, like public.json is a UTI, or edu.stanford.cs193d.emojiart could be a UTI. Okay? A unique identifier of the type. Now, we don't really care because we only open one thing, or anything we open, JSON or an emoji art or whatever, is all just a JSON data anyway to us, so we don't care about the type. But some apps might open multiple different types. They might need to know what type it is in order to successfully open it or save it. And that's it. This is all we need to do to do an emoji art document. We're done. Now we can use all the API of UI document, like it's asynchronous opening and saving, uh, working over iCloud, uh, automatic auto-saving, all that stuff just all works for free as long as we implement these things. So let's use all those things back in our emoji art view controller here to replace the places where we're accessing the file system directly here. Okay? So we want to get rid of all this, so let's delete all that, and let's delete all this, okay? and we're going to replace this with stuff from uh, using the same primitives, but using the document. Now, to do this, we obviously need to have a var, which is the document, because we have to be able to talk to our own document. So we're just going to have a var called emoji, called document, which is of type emoji art document. Okay? This is going to be set in that code from the file chooser. Right? When the file chooser chooses a file, we're going to set our document in our new MVC. And then it's just going to magically show its stuff using all the document API. So let's talk about view will appear first. Okay, when our first document first appears, we need to open our document. So we do that by just saying document open. Okay, and that's all we have to say. Uh, it does come with a completion handler that will tell you whether it was successful doing that. And we usually want to check this and say if we're, there was success, then we're going to do some stuff. What might we want to do here? Maybe we want to set our title equal to uh, the document's localized name. Okay, this localized name just comes from the URL. It's like the last part of the URL without the file extension put in there, so that's nice. We need self in there, of course, inside of closure. But the most important thing we want to do if we successfully open the uh, document is to set our model into to the model that the document was able to get by opening that file. Okay, so the document has an emoji art that it got from the file. We have our model. We want to get it. Okay, so that's the main thing we, we are doing uh, in all these document things is setting, getting our uh, model. Now, what about save? Okay, well, we actually don't really do save. Uh, we do uh, autosave. Okay, so how do we do uh, autosave? The only thing that's important with autosave is that you tell the UI document that something has changed. Otherwise, it's not going to waste its time autosaving something that hasn't changed. And you do that by uh, first telling the document to look at your model. So we want to set it to our model. And then you tell the document that a change has happened. So you update the change count uh, and you say that that change is done. By the way, this done can be undo, redo, or done. So we're not talking about the undo manager, um, so I can't really show you that, but the other option is done, meaning the change is done. And by the way, I'm only going to do this if the document's emoji art is not nil. Okay, if we, if we haven't actually started up a document, it's useless to be uh, updating its change count there. Okay, now, this is strange because we are saying and noting that our document changed because the user pressed the save button. <laughs> okay, that is weird. Really, we should note it's changed when anything changes. 
Someone dragged out another emoji. They resized it. They put a different background URL. That's when we should, quote, save. And really, this method shouldn't even be called save. It should be called document change. Well, unfortunately, the time, when the one, number one thing it's going to cut off that I can't get done because of this midterm coming in here is putting that saving, uh, the document change tracking in. And why is that an interesting thing? Well, because that's being tracked in our view, right? Our view is what knows when we've resized something or dragged something in. So our view needs to talk back to our controller and say, hey, something changed. Well, it can't talk back to our controller except for blind and structured, right? So how would we, any of you here, how would you suggest that we talk from our view back to our controller to tell it, hey, this document has changed, this document has changed? What would you suggest? Mechanism. Okay, so one suggestion is, let's have a variable in our view that's a reference to our controller. And that's not allowed by MVC, right? View can't talk to its controller that way. So let's try delegation, okay? The same way a table view talks back to its controller, it uses delegation, a scroll view, it uses delegation. That's how we would have to do it. So we would have to set up our own delegation where we have an emoji art view delegate. Okay? That's what we would do. Unfortunately, I don't have time to do that, but that's what we would do. So I don't want you to get the idea here that you have, should have save buttons in document apps. You should never have a save button. Okay? It should know when things change and just call this update change count. Okay? But since we don't have that, we will have our save button. We will just tell it when it saves. All right? Um, okay, what else do we have to do here? How about uh, closing our document? Right now, we only have one document, untitled.json, but we're just about to ask, add a file chooser that's going to let us choose lots of different documents. So we need a way to close this document so we can open another document. So I'm going to go back and add a close button to our UI. Okay, I'm going to put it right here on the other side from save over there. Okay, I'm going to get in here, bar button again. And bar button up here. There's actually a standard one for that. It's actually called done, because you're done with this document right there. And we are then going to control drag. We'll put it right in here. And I'm going to have an action here. I'm going to call it close. Could call it done, but I'll call it close. Okay. And now let's go back to full width here. Go back over to here. All right, so what are we going to do in our close? Well, for a document app, it's easy. You're just going to say document close. Okay. Now, it also has a you know, success uh, completion handler, but I don't really care because I'm not going to do anything whether it's successful or not. I'm just going to try to close it and hope it will be, and 99% of the time it's going to be. Um, I could you know, catch your errors and stuff of having problems for some reason, closing and having problems, but the best we can really do is just try to close and see what happens. The other thing I'm going to do is I want to save right before, <laughs> now because I don't have automatic change tracking, I want to save before I close. If I had automatic change tracking, I wouldn't do save here. Okay? I would delete this line of code. And in fact, I am going to delete this line of code when I post this code uh, after lecture because I'm going to have that change tracking in there. Now notice I did save with no argument because save takes a bar button item and I don't have one. Here's a cool trick. I'm going to make this an optional and have it default to nil. Okay. By doing that, now I can call save with nothing and it defaults to nil and I don't use this bar button item in here, so all is well. Okay. Everybody got all that? Okay. Now to test all this, this is it. See how we've replaced all that stuff in our, that was file system now with all this nice code that's very understandable and readable. Open our document, close our document, update the document. I'm going to, in my view did load, set my document to be untitled.json. Okay. Eventually, it's going to be that chooser thing, but for now, it's going to be that. So in view did load, just as, this is just as a test. I'm going to take this right out of here right after we do this test. Um, and all I'm going to do here is get that, uh, that JSON URL again. Okay. You can see why I put that in a little code snippet because I have to type it so many times. Uh, and all I'm going to do here is just set my document. Right. That's this var right here. Okay. It has to be an emoji art document. I'm going to set that equal to an emoji art, oh, we're running out of battery there, document. Uh, and remember that um, UI documents only have one initializer, it's the URL. Okay, so this is file URL, the URL. Okay, make sense there? 
I have my closed curly braces? There we go. So that's it. So I'm only doing that just as a test. So now, when we launch our app, it should load that untitled JSON up because we're immediately setting that as our document, and the document just does its thing. So let's go ahead and take a look at that here. Run and let you see what's going on. Okay, look, it loaded up untitled.json, and let's put a little airplane flying across there, and I'm going to hit save to let it know that there was a change to the document, and then hit done. Okay, now if I quit and run again, hopefully we'll see the airplane there, and we did. Okay, so UI document is doing all the things the file system stuff was doing for us. But now that we have UI document, we can have our app launch instead of launch and show this, launch and show that file choosing thing, the document browser thing, like the files app. So let's go put that piece of the puzzle uh, in here. Uh, before I do anything, I'm going to make sure I remove this view did load. Okay, I'm going to take that away because I'm not going to be setting my document to this in untitled uh, JSON. I'm going to be setting it to whatever the document view browser uh, wants me uh, to have it be. All right, so here we are. This is the document browser view controller. This is the thing where all the magic happens here. Uh, one thing we have to do to get this guy in the loop is to go back to our storyboard and have the entry point no longer be our MVC. Instead, it's going to be this. Okay, and we're going to be responsible for getting from here to presenting this on top of this to show our document. So let's see how we do that. All right, so let's do all the parts I talked about in the slides here. Let's do view did load. Let's configure. So, of course, we want our delegate equals self. We need that. Um, also, we are not going to allow picking of multiple items because we only know how to show one MOG art document at a time. Allows documentation to be true. Mm, yeah, for now. And then here is things tint color. I'm not going to change the color or the look of it. You can play around with that, uh, see what you like there. So, we're going to come back to view did load and address this in just a moment. But now let's go down here to did request document creation with handler. This is where it's saying, give me the URL of a blank document because someone wants to create one. And I'm going to make this really easy on us here. I'm going to delete all of that in there and just call this import handler that it gave me. See, it's giving me this import handler. It takes a URL and either copy or move. And I'm going to call it with a template, which is going to be a URL, and dot copy. And all I have to do is make a URL, var template URL, okay? make this template point to some blank document. And I'm going to do that in view did load right here. Okay? And I type that a little here. And to do that, I'm just going to get a URL, this time not into my documents directory, because this is the blank document I'm copying all the time. I don't want it to appear in the documents when the, guy goes, when the user goes and looks there. So I'm going to put it in application support. So application support is a great place to put things that are kind of behind the scenes, okay? But they're permanent. I want this template to stick around. I don't want it to be in caches and get deleted, although I probably could put it in caches because I can always recreate it here in view did load. But anyway, so this is the URL. I'm going to call it untitled.json, just for old time's sake. Okay, I'm putting in my application support directory. And all I want to do here, though, is make sure I create this file. So I've got the URL to it. So to create it, I'm going to say, if the template is not nil, in other words, I've got, I was able to create the URL, which I should be able to, I'm going to now set allow document creation, this var up here, instead of it being true, I'm going to set it to be the result of asking the file manager, the default file manager, to create that file. So it has a method called create file. You give it the path to the file, the templates path, and you create it with some contents. I'm going to make it empty because it's just a blank document, an empty document, and I don't even need any file attributes, so let's get rid of that. Now, create file is a nice way to create a file because it doesn't throw or anything like that, and it returns a Boolean whether that file either it got created or already exists, which is exactly what I want here. And if it's true, then I will allow document creation. Otherwise, I'm not going to allow it because I couldn't create the template. See why I'm doing that right there? Um, so that's a nice little trick to kind of do uh, when you're creating your template. If you fail to create it for some reason, uh, you, can, you can do that. So now this import handler will just work. Okay, I'm passing it this template that I created up here, 
and having it copy it out of application support into the documents directory. Uh, these other things over here we don't need to even touch. Uh, these are the things that get called when people click on documents. Okay, did pick document URLs, did import document is when some other app like the Files app asks you to open up one of your documents. And notice that they're both doing the same one-liner which is please present the document at that URL. That means put up your view controller to show it. Okay, so we, and there's, a, by the way, an error one here, see, failed to import document at. You really should put up an alert here, but I haven't shown you how to put up alerts. I'm going to show you next week, so you can't do it. But that, you really should put an alert that says couldn't load document, or couldn't open document, or whatever. All right, so here's present document that's going to present it, and I'm going to basically do what I showed you in the slides right here, which is I'm going to get my storyboard. There was already code to get the storyboard in here from that uh, template. And I'm going to use the storyboard to get the view controller that I want to present. Now, it's a little tricky here. The view controller I want to present is actually not my emoji art view controller. It's the navigation controller it's in. Everyone understand that? So I have to somehow instantiate this navigation controller, which will also bring this in. So I need to give this guy a name. So I'm just going to select it, go to the identity inspector, and give it a name. I'm going to call it my document MVC. Okay, it can be any name we want, but document MVC is kind of what that is at the top of my document MVC uh, mechanism. So now that I have this name, I can go back here and say, let uh, my document, document VC, equal the storyboard dot instantiate view controller with identifier document MVC. Okay, so now we have our document MVC, and I'm now just going to configure it, and then I'm going to present it by saying present the document MVC, uh, VC rather, uh, and animated true. And one animated true because someone clicked on it in the file thing. So we want it to slide up, right? We don't want it to just appear. We want it to slide up from the bottom. There's even a way to make this like grow out of the icon in the files thing, which is really cool. It's not even that hard. But unfortunately, I don't have time to show it to you, uh, but just know that there's a way to do it. Uh, this is going to be the normal slide up from the bottom presentation. Um, but this document MVC has an emoji view controller in it that we need to set the document of. So I'm going to do the same kind of thing we do in a prepare. I'm going to say if I can let my emoji view controller equal the document view controller, its contents, remember that contents? I showed you that before. Let's go look at it just to remind you. I have this in utilities. Uh, the contents is a UI view controller method right here that just says, if I'm a navigation controller, return my contents. Otherwise, if I'm not a navigation controller, just return myself. So this will make it so that this code that I just wrote will work, whether it's wrapped in a navigation controller or not. Okay? So get the contents as an emoji art view controller. View controller. View controller. Okay? So if I can get the emoji art view controller, I guess I should call this emoji art view controller to be nice there. Then I can set its document. Emoji art view controller dot document equals, and what is the document equals? It means equals a new emoji art document, which we know the constructor is file URL. And what's the URL? It's the URL they want us to present. Document URL. Okay? What is this saying? Instance member. Oh, capital E. There we go. Okay, it thought it wanted a static method there. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, uh, one, sorry, one other thing we need to do is the types. Right now, if we go look at our uh, project settings right here, I'm going to go over and look at our project settings, and we look at the info here, uh, the document types that we can open are images. <laughs> Okay, and we don't open images, we open JSON files. Okay, public.json. And like I say, when I, um, when I post the code after lecture, I'll also do this exported UTIs down here and make a new type emoji art and then put that as our type. But for now, we'll say that we do um, JSON files. Okay, so if I haven't forgotten anything here, this should work. 
Okay, look at that. Already you can see our app is quite different. It is showing us a UI that looks just like the um, uh, Files app, right? It's got the folders and all this stuff. We can even go here over here to iCloud Drive. We can go on, on my iPad. There it is, emoji art. Let's look inside. Okay, there is our untitled.json. Let's open it. Woo! It works. Okay, let's close this one. Let's, uh, oh, it doesn't close. Look, I'm pressing done. It doesn't close. Okay, why our MVC comes up, it takes over the whole screen because we presented it right here. How do we make it go away? Okay, how do we dismiss it, essentially? Well, we do that in the view controller itself. The view controller that wants to dismiss, it dismisses itself. And the way we're going to do that is in close, when you hit that done button right there, and we're going to save, but then we're going to say uh, dismiss animated. Okay, and so dismiss animated, true, is how you dismiss yourself. If you've been presented, you can dismiss yourself. This also has a completion handler, and in that completion handler, I'm going to close. Okay, so I'm going to wait till I've been dismissed, the animation has happened, then I'll close my document. And of course, now I'm in a closure, so I have to say self. Okay, so let's try that. Okay, so here I'm going to open Untitled again. Okay, now I'm going to close it, and I'm back here. Now I'm going to create a document. Ready? Create. It copies that template. It's blank. Now I'm going to drag some document in here. Let's see if we find something good here. Something like that. Okay, put an apple on the tree, let's say. Like that. Okay, now I'm going to, I'll save, just to note that it has changed. Um, Again, we should do that automatically. And then I'm going to say done. Okay, and now I have two documents. Now I can go back to the other one, right? Click that, go to this one, put that one. Now, what if I want to put these things on iCloud Drive? Watch what happens when I go to iCloud Drive uh, for emoji art. Create document. You see, look, I can create a document on iCloud Drive. So this is actually created on the network. I'll be able to see on all my devices. So make another one here, something like this. Put a B out there, big B, and mark saved, and then done. And now we have this document, Untitled, right here that you see, is on iCloud Drive. So we still have the Untitled ones on our device, and we have the one here on iCloud Drive. When we click on it, we get to see it. Okay, now, the next thing I'm going to do is make it so that this UI looks a lot better, <laughs> okay? Because look at the icons there. I mean, is that the world's ugliest looking icons? We're going to go from the world's ugliest looking icons to the world's best looking icons. Because with UI document, you can have each document have its own icon. Okay? And I'm going to set the icon to be a miniature version of the document, a thumbnail image of the document. That way I can easily see which one was the one with the apple and which one has the bee. It'll be, I'll be able to see it right in here. So let's do that. That turned out to be super simple to do in UI document. So I'm going to go back to my emoji art document here. Okay, this simple guy, and I'm just going to add one method, which I'm going to override, okay, called file attributes to write, and this is essentially just returning a dictionary of the file attributes, like is this file hidden, those kind of things. So I'm going to get those attributes from my super class, because I'm overriding this, so I'm going to get the super ones, and then I'm going to add one attribute, which is this kind of complicated uh, thing called a thumbnail dictionary key. It actually, the value is another dictionary. And you put this other key here, thumbnail 1024 by 1024 size key. Don't let that fool you. It can be any size you want, although if it's too small, it'll use the document icon again. So make sure it's big enough to actually be an improvement on that. And I need to put a thumbnail in there. So I'm going to add a var to be that thumbnail UI image. Okay, thumbnail is just a UI image. And now I'm going to set this thumbnail image in my document every time I close. So when I close, I'm just going to make another snapshot of it. So let's go do that to my controller. Here's where I close. Right after I save, I'm going to say uh, that my documents thumbnail equals my emoji art view snapshotted. Okay, so snapshot is a little var that I wrote. I put it in utilities. You can go look at it. It's only three or four lines of code that just takes the view and snapshots it, grabs it as a UI image. Okay, and I'm only going to do this, by the way, if, again, if my documents uh, emoji art is not nil. 
because I don't want to snapshot a blank document. But what I should do here is do this snapshot, and then if, it's, if this thing is, is nil, I should come up with some other nice thumbnail for it, okay? But I'm not doing that. Okay, so let's make sure it rebuilds everything here. Okay, so let's run again. Go over here and see what this looks like. Okay, it actually ran even though it said it had an error there, but it, it, did, it did run successfully. Uh, all right, so let's open one of our documents. Okay, remember we set our thumbnails when we close. So here's one. Let's go ahead and um, close it. And look, we get this beautiful thumbnail of it. How about this other one over here, this guy? Okay, let's close that one. And this even works on iCloud Drive. It might be a little delayed on iCloud Drive because it has to upload it, but let's try. See how fast, oh, pretty quick network right here. Uh, I don't know if you could see in iCloud Drive, it actually had the little uh, cloud symbol there briefly as it was uh, downloading it back from the cloud, which is kind of cool. Um, and this UI that you see here is all the full files UI. So not only can you do things like I did before where you check the info, but you can move it, like I could move this from my iCloud back to my uh, local device or copy here, I guess. And it's asking here if I want to keep both or replace it because both, they're both called untitled, so I'll keep both. And so now if I go back to my iPad here, now I have three items, okay, including this one here. And again, sometimes you get a delay when you move things from uh, iCloud getting um, uh, the thumbnails, because the thumbnails can be kind of big at, at times, and so slogging them around can take a little bit of time here and there. Uh, you can also rename your files, so, you know, this is Apple in the Sky, so let's rename it, let's call it Sky Apple, okay, so you can rename your files, all that stuff, and the user can do it in here without having to go over to the Files app uh, to do that. Okay, I have a couple minutes left, so I'm going to show you one other thing, which is running this on iPhone. Okay, so let's go run this on the iPhone. I'm just going to go ahead and run it in the simulator, iPhone 10. Let's see what this looks like on the iPhone 10. So this whole document browser, view browser thing, it all works just as well on the iPhone as it does uh, on the iPad. There's only a couple of things we have to think about when we try and make this app work on the iPhone, as you'll see here once this gets fired up. Okay, so there it is. See, you can look, uh, we can look on iCloud Drive here. We can even see that document, the, the document that we've created before on iCloud Drive and, uh, and open it. We can open stuff off of iCloud Drive. So I can open it. Now, on iPhone, I'd really like to still be able to drag some emojis in and work on this document, right? One thing I can't do, though, is create a new document. Do you see why? Because on iPhone, you can't drag from Safari to drag in, drag in new things. So it's really misleading that it says create document here. Because if I hit create document, it can't, I can't really create an actual document because I can't drag anything in. So I really don't want it to say create document on iPhone. The other thing is I want my collection view to work. Ah, I can't drag. Okay, I'm trying to hold, push down drag. Why does drag not work? Well, drag doesn't work because collection view, by default, on iPhone, does not allow dragging. Okay, but we can turn it on. So let's go fix both those things in our code. We're going to fix the problem with the misleading create by just this part here where we go and create the template. I'm just not going to do that on iPhone. So I'm gonna, that's going to leave this to be false and it's not going to do it. So how do I check my code to see if I'm on an iPad? And you do that this way. You say, if UI device current, that's my current device, has a user, iter, I, user, iter, I, user interface idiom okay, of dot pad. Okay? And the other option is dot phone. So I'm only going to do this template thing, which is the only thing that can set this to true, on the iPad. So I'm never going to have create document on the iPhone. That's good. Now, what about the dragging of the collection view? Well, that's in my controller. I'm going to go down here to where I create my collection view. Okay, this is my collection view outlet setter here. And I'm going to set this thing in collection view called drag interaction enabled. Now, this is true by default on iPad and false by default on iPhone. But if I set it to true everywhere, now it will make it so I can drag in my collection view on the iPhone as well. So when we go here, we won't see uh, the uh, create button, and we also will be able to work on our document. Okay, so let's open this document right here. Here it is. Now look, I can drag. 
Okay, drag around in my collection view, and I can also pull things out of here and into my picture. Okay, I can even mark it as saved and done. And if I went back to my iPad, I'd be able to see it over there. Okay, so the only two things I'm going to do post lecture here that you're not going to be able to watch me do is the delegation thing, so that we don't have to have that save button anymore because we hate that, and also adding the new type emoji art. Okay, which really is only two things I'm going to change. I'm going to add the emoji art thing in that uh, settings that I was telling you about, and then I'm going to change this right here, my empty template, to be untitled.emojiArt. That's the only change I'm going to make to make it be using emoji art documents instead of JSON. Okay? All right. That is it. I will see you all next Monday. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.